friends, Jerry Rosa here in the Rosa String Works Workshop. Today is Wednesday, April 27th. Before we uh, get into what I'm doing today, I'm going to interrupt this video and show you a little video clip taken a couple of days ago. We had a visitor stop in the shop. My friends, we have a visitor in the shop today, and this is Dan. What's your last name? Groves, like a grove of trees. That's right, Dan Groves. And he, Dan uh, was just on his way down 44 and was passing through and called and asked if he could stop in. I said, sure, come on by. He's thinking about getting into the luthier business, and uh, I've been warning him what to look out for. Yes. <laughs> So uh, where, where will your shop be if you have a shop? It's in Galesburg, Illinois. Do you have any idea? Are you going to start that anytime soon? Or? Well, I've, I've just got my shop built and uh, uh -huh. I'm getting things set up now. So it'll yeah. be a little bit yet. Yeah. Well, I wish you luck. I hope yeah. it works out for you. Yeah, I hope so too. <laughs> And so, my friends, if you are in the area and you decide you want to stop by the shop, that's okay with me. Just come on by. We'll have a nice little chat. I don't have a whole lot more to report on the mandolin, except that I did actually get the frets in the fretboard. So, you know, when I hold it up here now, it even looks a little more finished, even though it's not. I did put yet another coat of shellac on this. Incidentally, I flooded two more coats of shellac on that old Gibson guitar. Let me just show you that too. And there you have it again. It's still showing all the grain, but that's to be expected, I think. I can tell that a lot of the grain is actually filling in. So I think I'm going to flood it one more time with shellac, then give it several days to dry, then sand it and maybe put one more coat on it before I put the oil varnish on it. I do think I'm gaining ground here finally. I know it probably doesn't look like it in the, in the camera, but I do think with the visual inspection I've got here, I do think I'm gaining quite a bit of ground. I think it's gonna look considerably different the next time you see it. I mentioned that I'm probably gonna coat this with a, at least one coat of true oil varnish before I move on to the binding, and probably more like two coats. Now, I spray them on. People have told me, don't spray them, you know, wipe them on with gauze or wipe them on with a cloth or whatever. Let me explain it to you this way. I have put true oil varnish on a lot of instruments. It's not my first rodeo. I have done it every way you can do it. In other words, I've used bare fingers, which is what's on the bottle. I've used gauze, I've used brushes, I've used every technique, including spraying. My preference is spraying of all the, of the choices. And the reason is because it's 10 times faster, 10 times faster. I can go, shoo, 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 shoo. I'm done. You know, I mean, it's that quick. It really is that quick. So it takes me less than a minute to do it. I don't have time to do it the other way. And you can get just as many runs the other way. Trust me. How do I know? Because I've done it. The, with the spray-in, I really don't get any runs anymore, knock on wood. I have learned the technique, and it's just one pass, one pass, one pass, one pass. You know, if you do any more than that, it will run. But if you just hit it very lightly with a pass, it works perfectly, and it goes on glass smooth. You know, you can say what you want, but my preference is spraying. You know, maybe I just have a good sprayer, and I do have a DeVille Bis, so it's a, it's a good sprayer. But anyway, that's what I'm going to probably do. I just, I just feel like I have to explain these things because I keep getting the same comments over and over. And so now you know why I do what I do. It's definitely not my first rodeo, even though it may seem like it to you. Keep in mind, I got more than 800 videos on YouTube. So I've done a few things, you know. I mean, just that's just what you see. You could probably triple that in terms of experience, at least triple that. Because, I mean, there's a lot of stuff that never makes it to YouTube, number one. And there's 30 years before <laughs> of experience before I ever got to YouTube. So it's definitely not my first rodeo. The reason sometimes it looks fumbly, sometimes it looks like I don't know what I'm doing, is because I'm trying something that maybe I haven't tried in 30, 40 years, you know, I don't know, or maybe it's brand new to me, you know. So I do try things and I show you the real life of it. I don't try to sugarcoat it. I don't try to hide my mistakes. I just show you the way it is. 
And so sometimes it does look like I don't know what I'm doing. And for the most part, in those cases, I don't. <laughs> but I, I can figure it out. I, you know, like I said, it's not my first rodeo. So even though I don't know about this new bull that I'm going to ride for the very first time, I've ridden hundreds of other bulls. That gives you a little bit of experience. You know, there you go. So I hope that analogy makes sense. Well, anyway, that's where I'm at. And uh, I won't take any more of your time with this today. I am going to try something new. People tell me I'm getting involved in politics when I talk about that war in Ukraine. Well, I don't see it as political at all. Not even that much. I don't see any politics involved. I see a murderer. I see a person like Hitler. And people say, he's not like Hitler, he's like Stalin. I don't care who you compare him to. Do you understand that? He is a scumbag from where they come from. He is a murderer. And I am going to put a large rant about that whole situation today. I have said we've already started World War III. I stand by that statement 100%. And I'll tell you why if you care to go see my other channel, which I've had since I started this channel. I just don't use it. It's under my personal name, Jerry Rosa. And I will put a link in the description of this video if you want to see my rant on the status uh, of our involvement in Ukraine. We definitely need to cut this off. The only time you can cut off World War III is at the beginning. Does that, does that not make sense to you? The only time you can stop World War III is at the beginning. If you let World War III happen, you haven't stopped anything. I'll put a link in the description. Thank you.